copies of this chart and then we picked it up again um, in Bible study and it was profound to me how the Lord had dropped it in my heart to look this um, chart up because we are in the stage of the rebellion and the paganism aspect of this chart and when people um, get involved in paganism and idolatry and rebellion against God then the next thing the um, nation goes into would be famine, plagues, and slavery. So some parts of the world, because of the evil things that our nation has done, is already experiencing the famine, the plagues, and the slavery, but we the nation who's been perpetrating it on other people. And so it's going to it's already here where people are operating in rebellion. So I wanna go to I want to go to 1 Samuel because 1 Samuel tells us what rebellion is as. 1 Samuel chapter 15. I always thought of the Old Testament as helping us to get a good understanding of the heart of God. The history of God because history means his story so he's telling us his story by allowing us to see what was taking place um, back be long before we even thought about coming into existence. And there is really nothing new under the sun. So the same things that people have been doing since the beginning of time, we see throughout the scriptures that these things have, have been happening. And if you read throughout the scriptures, you'll be able to see that the Table of Nation chart is describing really the Bible. So some people want, don't want to acknowledge that the scriptures are real or that Jesus is real. And I, since we've started posting our messages on YouTube, we've gotten all types of comments from people coming against Jesus and the people who have discovered that the people in America and other parts of the West Indies and, and all over the world really, that slaves are really the people who are scattered over the world, not the people in Israel, but the people who are scattered over the world who really are the true people of Israel. After finding that out, people come against the name Jesus and, and, and they get caught up in the names. But we know there's power in the name of Jesus because we've seen demon spirits respond to the name of Jesus. So for me, I'm going to stick with what works. And what works is standing on the belief that the Bible is inspired by God, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and people can, I always continue to tell you that you as a free agent, free will, can choose to believe whatever you want to believe. I'm choosing to believe that the scriptures is true and that it is the inspired word of God. And because I believe that, you can keep, I keep seeing evidence to prove that what God tells us in his word is true. And a good example of that is this nation um, chart of the, um, the nation cycle of nations. So we see that we are at the place now where idolatry and paganism and witchcraft is rampant in the earth and there's no there's nothing to hold it back because at one point the people of God, the real people of God, understood to stand against it. People had a good prayer life. People understood that without holiness, they're not going to be able to see God. People had a fear of going to dying and going to hell. But what the enemy has done through changing laws like the book of Daniel say would take place. People have no reverence now for God. People don't believe God exists. That's why evolution is necessary to be taught. Because if you believe you came from a big bang and you just evolved from monkeys, then there's no reason for you to have any reverence or fear of a creator God. And to me, it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does to believe in faith. Even though God tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. But you can look around and see that everything has been designed and is meticulously flowing in order. But the enemy is on purpose bringing about disorder and chaos in order to bring us to a new age movement. He got us, he got to establish the world um, in his way, in his order, which he is the God of this world. 
Am I making sense to you so far? So in 1 Samuel 15, verse 23, it says, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So we got people now, most of the people in the world is rebelling against God. They don't want to have any anything to do with God. They don't want to hear about God. They don't want to hear about Jesus. Okay? So, another example of this is what I was telling you all on Wednesday. I thought this was worth mentioning again on September 12th. This was on the news about Sally Quinn who is a DC socialite opening openly acknowledging that she is an occultist who cast spells on people and that they died. This is what's taking place in the nation. And in this particular article, she's sort of, kind of if you read it, she's kind of backing away from it. But I want to read the last page of this article to you. And then we're going to go back to scriptures. It says, what we do know is that these people, talking about John Podesta, Sally Quinn, and other people like them, have completely rejected any notion of a loving God and moved towards darkness. Furthermore, we also know that this darkness is not about consenting adults behaving badly amongst themselves. Rather, this is about them attempting to harness a power to control others, to manipulate events to their will, to hurt or outright kill those who offend or insult them. Now, I want, to, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Remember, I try always to relate scriptures with what we see taking place around us as much as possible. And the church should be strong and bold in the things of God. And we have been taught to me erroneously that Christians can't have demons. And Paul said that he had a messenger from Satan to buffet him. A messenger from Satan is a demonic spirit. And he sought the Lord three times and the Lord says his grace was sufficient for him. So sometimes God allow evil to come against people for the purpose of keeping them humble because they need that extra measure to come against them or they would get prideful and boastful and arrogant because of knowledge. He said because of the revelation that God had given him, the Lord told him he had allowed that messenger from Satan to buffet him. Okay, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not, they're not natural, physical weapons. But they are mighty. Our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now let me give you the definition of the word warfare. Because we think as believers in Christ, because Jesus said it's, it's finished at the cross, that we're not going to have anything coming against us. And because we've been taught that Christians can't have demons, we got people who are practicing witchcraft and the occult, and they're sending demon spirits against Christian people, and Christian people are dying, and people, um, Christian people are sick and crippled and having things come against them and they're running to the antichrist pharmaceutical companies and doctors to get help and all they're doing is getting their bodies to be made weaker by the things that they've been given to put into them. When you listen to the commercials about the medications that the doctors prescribe, some of the side effects are worse than what you're being treated for. I've heard some of the side effects be death. But people still take the medications because they don't understand their warfare. The word warfare means engagement in or activities involved in war 
or conflict. Fighting, war, these are some of the synonyms for the word warfare. Fighting, war, combat, conflict, action, hostilities, and bloodshed. So this scripture in 2 Corinthians is telling us for the weapons of our warfare, that tells us we are in a war. We are in a cosmic battle. We can't see our enemies. That's why we need faith. And let's turn to Ephesians. Because this is really important for, for the body of Christ to wake up and start praying. And fasting if you're able to fast. Ephesians 6. And I know we go here a lot. Because more and more as we see things taking place in the news around us. We realize that these scriptures take on more power. More relevance. More important to us. And this, this Bible that I'm reading these scriptures from the subtitle is the warfare of a spirit filled believer. You got to be filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God and walk by faith knowing that you do have an enemy. You, don't, you can't just ask Jesus into your life and then sit down and think that you're just going to die and go to heaven. You're going to have to fight because you're living in hostile territory. You're living in the enemy's territory. And he's got people who's worshiping him and serving him and conjuring up demon spirits and sending them against the body of Christ. Those people who he doesn't have on his side, he's sending demon spirits to war against you, to contend with you, to steal your faith and, and to steal your soul. Am I making sense to you? All right, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So the devil has wiles, and we got to be able to stand against it. For we wrestle not against flesh, and blood, just like the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or flesh. We wrestle not against people, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is an everyday battle. So don't be deceived into thinking that you can get someone who is powerful or anointed or who is proficient in casting demons out of you and it's a one-time experience. You're going to be battling day after day after day after day. Just like how every day you got to bathe your physical body, every day you got to contend against what's going to be coming against you. So what's happening is people are getting discouraged and frustrated because we've been taught that Christians can't have demon spirits coming against you and so you think that you've committed a sin or something is wrong with you or God has forsaken you or God has forgotten you but he's telling us that we are in a war we are in a battle and the weapons of your warfare they are not carnal they are not fleshly weapons and we are not fighting against people but we're fighting against demon spirits and people that's coming against us and we're going to have to stand against them every day with the full armor of God on us. It's not something you do casually. If you in Christ Jesus, you have to endure hardship like a soldier. You're in a battle. You're in a military. You're in God's army. And evil is trying to take you out. You're fighting every day. So when you sit down and you watch TV all day, or you gossip all day, or you have parties all the time, and you eat and drink and not know what's going on, the enemy is planning and plotting against you. Am I making sense to you today? All right. Let's look at 2 Kings. See some of the things that God said about witchcraft and what was happening in the Old Testament. Because the same thing that hap was happening then is happening now. 2 Kings chapter 9. We have to be strong. We have to fight. You can't take a break. Because the enemy never takes a break. 
He's always plotting. He's always planning. And when you see a country where the people who is in power is acknowledging openly that they are practicing the occult, then the people of God got to wake up. The people of God needs to be praying against this. Praying that the Lord's will would be done. Praying that the body of Christ would wake up. Praying that the Lord would protect his people from the evil that we now openly are seeing as in, the, in the earth. Before it was being hidden. You couldn't see it. They didn't know about it. But now because of the power that they have, they are passing laws to make this be known in the open. So we need to be praying on our knees in secret. You know, you understand what I'm saying? It's important to keep your house prayed up. To ask the Lord to cover you in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. You got to be speaking that name. You have to put on the full armor of God. You have to, the armor is the breastplate of righteousness. You got to walk in righteousness. You have to speak the word of God. That means you have to know the word. The word is your weapon against darkness. The word pushes back evil. The shield of faith quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. The scripture is telling us fiery darts are going to be coming against you. If you're not walking in holiness and righteousness and having truth, the belt of truth around you, you're not going to be able to effectively stand against what's coming against us because it's ramped up now. And you would have to be really in a daze to not be able to see the level of darkness that's coming against God's people, that's coming against humanity, but especially God's people because God's people are here to hold back some of that darkness darkness to make a difference but you have to be sober prayerful and alert in order to be able to do it effectively am I making sense to you chapter 9 let's start at verse 1 it says Elijah the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him gird up thy loins and take this box of oil in thy hand and go to Ramoth Gilead and when thou cometh thither, look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil, pour it on his head, and say, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man and the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting. And he said, I have an errand to, to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, Unto which of us all? And he said, To thee, O captain. And he arose, and he went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee over the people of the Lord and over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master, that I may avenge the blood of the servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. Of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish. Jezebel was a witch. God sent Jehu to tear down what what, Je what Jezebel had done and also to, to avenge the people. So God will avenge his people. And it's, it's effective when God avenges his people, not us. Look at verse 22. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, because this person was asking Jehu, was he coming in peace or war? He said, and it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, it is, is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, what peace? This is what I wanted you to see. What peace can there be in a nation so long as whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? How can a nation be at peace? How can you be safe? When people openly at the head are practicing witchcraft, okay? 
All right, let's turn to Nahum. Nahum chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. Nahum chapter 3. Witchcraft is an abomination to God. Witchcraft, I'm going to say that again. Witchcraft is an abomination to God. And I want to give you a couple of definitions before I read these verses of Scripture. I'm going to give you, which I find very interesting, Strong's Concordance definition for the word divination. It's Greek, and the number is 44. 36. 4436. It means python, a mythical serpent slain by Apollo. And what we have thought have been mythology is real. In the spirit world, there really is a serpent-type spirit that wraps itself around you, your spirit, your spirit man, just like a python spirit in the natural would wrap itself around your physical body. You can see the physical python, but you can only see the result of the spiritual python. It says it's a divining spirit. A divining spirit. Python, called after the Pythian serpent, said to have guarded the oracle at Delphi and been slain by Apollo. In Greek mythology, the name of the Pythian serpent or dragon that dwelt in the region of Pytho. Now, I'm going to give you the definition again for divination. It's the practice. The first definition was from strong concordance. This definition is just a regular dictionary. It says the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. I'm going to read that again. The practice of seeking knowledge of the future or unknown by supernatural means. And let me give you some synonyms to that word. Fortune telling. Because I want to break this down. This is what's taking place and it's even happening in the church and people calling it prophecy. This is how the enemy and witchcraft and occult has taken such a stronghold in our nation. Fortune telling, divining. That's why it's important to be careful what you name your children too. Divining. Prophecy. Prediction. Soothsaying. I'm giving you another regular dictionary definition. The practice of attempting to foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge by occult or supernatural means. In the Bible, it talks about divination. It talks about sorcery. And so let me give you the definition of the word sorcery because all of this falls under witchcraft. Okay? Sorcery. The use of magic. Especially Black magic. The use of power gained from the assistance or control of evil spirits. Especially for divining and necromancy. Necromancy is, 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 con is um, talking to the dead. Which the People who do fortune telling and psychic reading and all of this stuff, they get information from evil spirits by going to the graveyard and consulting with, with supposedly dead spirits, but it's not dead. It's really demons. 
Am I making sense to you? So now in Nahum, chapter 3, let's look at verse 4. It says, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcraft, that sells nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft. So this is what's happening. Even, even from before we were even born, some of our ancestors got themselves involved in this stuff, especially those of us who say that we are Hebrews <laughs> because we came from the West Indies and that the West Indies was known for witchcraft, voodoo, and all the occultic practices that went all over the world. That's why they were scattered all over the world for practicing voodoo and witchcraft and going against the Creator God. You see, it was sort of underground where people did it in secret, people did it in private, and I'm going to keep saying that, but now people are doing it openly. And they're worshiping the devil, and they're carrying out the devil's agenda to bring chaos and destruction through war and occult rituals and practices. Am I making sense to you? Can you see it? Verse 5, Behold, God speaking, I am against thee, says the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms shall, and the kingdoms thy shame. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee, and make thee vile and will set thee as a gazing stock. So don't worry about what they're doing. You just be strong in the Lord and stand against it because God is going to recompense their evil upon them. Am I making sense? Turn one book over and look at Micah. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. This is what God thinks about witchcraft in the Old Testament. In verse 12 it says, I will cut off witchcraft out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. See, soothsayers, sorcerers, they fall into the same category as witchcraft. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee. And thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. So will I destroy thy cities. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen such as they have not heard. This is what the, this is what the wrath of God is really all about. God is coming against people who is practicing witchcraft, who is rebelling against the knowledge of God. Turn to Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Am I making sense to you today? You got to wake up. You can't be lukewarm. You can't straddle the fence. Because the enemy is going to captivate your mind. That's why the scripture says, cast down imagination. And every high and lofty thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. If you're not hearing the word, and in the word, and praying, witchcraft is going to take you over. The result of witchcraft. Because people, are, people who practice witchcraft, they are serious. And they are committed. They're not lukewarm with their practicing and their beliefs in the devil. It's the people who say they belong to God that's lukewarm and not taking it serious and have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. And God says if you lukewarm, you make him sick and he's going to vomit you out of his mouth. But the de people who worship Satan, they are afraid to not be totally sold out and committed because of the pain and the evil that he afflicts on them that serve him. He forces them to be fully committed. And then he rewards them for it in this world. Am I making sense to you? All right, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Look at verse 7. It says, And to you who are troubled, 
rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. And flaming fire taking vengeance. God is going to take vengeance on them that know not God. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and work of faith with power. That the name, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. And you and him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's according to God's grace. God is going to take vengeance on them that's disturbing your rest. That's disturbing your peace. That's causing you to be constantly warring against evil. But in this world, in this time, this is what we are called to do. Don't disobey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I making sense to you? Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. You have to believe the word of God. Because we can see for ourselves that what God tells us is evolving and coming to pass right before our eyes. When people practice paganism and idolatry and rebel against God, evil reigns and rules. And there's all witnesses throughout the Old Testament of this. Am I making sense to you? So don't get discouraged. Don't grow weary. Don't quit. Don't, don't stop praying. Don't stop speaking the Lord's word. Don't stop standing on the Lord's word. Continue to be in faith. Galatians 5.19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? I want you to look at verse 20 because I want you to see idolatry and witchcraft. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred. That various emulation and wrath and strife, all of these things is part of what happens when the flesh is in control of a person. People who practicing witchcraft, they are in the flesh. They are able to see into the spiritual world because they worship demon spirits, fallen angels, and Satan. But when we walk according to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit has control over our hearts, our minds, everything about us. In verse 22 it says the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, which is the opposite of hatred in verse 20. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. If we've been crucified with Christ, then the flesh should no longer have dominion or control over us. And the more we draw close to God, the more we pray, the more we study the word, the more we speak the word, the more we hear the word and get the word in us, each believer should be able to effectively stand against the power of witchcraft demon spirits coming against you. you in a battle. you in a war. God didn't save you so you can just coast through life. He saved you to be a light, to be an example, to walk in Holy Ghost power, to be effective against the forces of darkness and evil that's coming against you, your family, your household. We're supposed to fight, not demons, but fight the good fight of faith. So by faith, I'm speaking the Lord's word. I'm standing against evil. I'm able to pray effectively for other people and for myself against the forces of darkness and evil that's being unleashed in this world against humanity. That's what the body of Christ is here for. And the enemy knows this. 
So what he's done is he's infiltrated the church with new age doctrines, principles and doctrines of demons, false prophets, lying people, conjuring up messages that come from the devil and not from God. Am I making sense? Look at Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, Revelation 18. I'm all over the place today, and I'm all fired up because I've been battling and dealing with this since last week Sunday, well, longer than that, but especially since last week Sunday. Revelation 18. Whatever happens in your life, from day to day as a believer in Christ, you have to remember that God is in control. Whatever he allows to come to your life, you have to start looking at it as, the, as Lord, what is it that you want me to learn from this? What is it that you're teaching me? Instead of looking at it that, woe is me, I've sinned, or I, I've fallen, or God has forsaken me. Instead, look at it that God has already forgiven you, that there is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, if you're not living according to the dictates of the flesh, but if the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you and evil is coming against you, God is training you up, he's strengthening you, he's teaching you, you can't learn war unless you fight, you can't learn how to use your weapon unless you need to use your weapon, you got to wake up and not be weak and namby pamby, but God look for you to be bold and strong, because he's not giving you a spirit of fear, he's giving you power and love and soundness of mind and newness of life, and you got to stand with Holy Ghost boldness and speak God's word with confidence and boldness in the name of Jesus Christ. Am I making sense to you? Revelation 18 verse 10 says standing afar off from for the fear of, the, of her torment saying alas that great city Babylon I'm sorry I want verse 23 18 23 it says, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. Men just like this lady, Sally Quinn in D.C. She blackmailed her husband through witchcraft to marry her, who was um, the editor of the Washington Post. For, for thy merchants where the great men of the earth by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Remember, we're in a warfare, bloodshed, people going to be slain. You're battling with the enemy. The believers are battling with the enemy that you can't see. Turn to Jeremiah. Revelation is, is an unveiling of what's going to happen at the end. And then verse um, 23 and 24 is telling you this is what's going to happen to those people through, who is through sorcery is, is making merchandise of the nations, the people of the nations. The Bible is telling us everything we need to know if we'll just listen and get in it and pay attention. Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah chapter 14. I love to give you a lot of scriptures. And, and I'm so grateful that the people who was part of our ministry understand that you need to always come here with a Bible. Because everything here is about Jesus. It's about God. And we're going to get in scriptures. If you don't get in scriptures at any other time, you're going to get in scriptures when you come here. Look at verse 14 of chapter 14. Then the Lord said, unto me. The prophets, and this is what's happening, this is how the witchcraft is even in the church now, the, because they're divining lies. The prophets prophesy lies in my name. People are saying that God raised up Donald Trump. That Donald Trump is God's man. <laughs> With all the evil stuff that this nation is doing, Donald Trump is God's man. I sent them not 
God is saying through Jeremiah, back in Jeremiah's day, the prophets prophesied lies in my name, and God say, I sent them, sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. Ne they prophesy unto you a false vision and divination by a python spirit, because that's what divination is, a spirit that binds, twists, constricts life. And a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. They're prophesying lies from their own deceit of their heart. Do you see it? I think it's mighty. Turn to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 13. Are you all getting anything out of this today? Is this making sense? Can you see it? Can you see it happening all around you? People got signs, psychic readings. You, you see people practicing Santeria. They, you, even on my own property, I've seen chicken, cooked chicken wings and markings on the sidewalks and dead birds and rats with the heads cut off and all types of things that the people who are practicing witchcraft I, 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 there's, we live near Salem, Massachusetts on the cars, I mean Salem is so steeped in witchcraft that on the police cars they got witches riding a broomstick with a witch hat as their logo for their policemen this is how bad it is and people think that's cool <laughs> Or acceptable or normal. I mean, people have accepted it as being normal. Okay, am I making sense? Ezekiel chapter 13. Look at verse 1. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy. The people, the prophets who prophesy out of Israel say this. Thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. The enemy has so have people prophesying lies that the real prophets of God is obscured. And people would be afraid to even listen to people who are really sent by God. That's a trick of the enemy. The scripture says, they prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear you the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. You have not gone, underline, you have not gone up into the gaps. So they have not spent time praying in the presence of God. Neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel. They didn't pray to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and underlying lying divination. Saying the Lord says and the Lord has not sent them. And they have made others to hope, this is what's taking place today, y'all, that they would confirm the word. Have you not seen a vain vision? And have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas you say, the Lord says it, albeit I, the Lord, have not spoken. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies, Therefore, behold, I am against you, says the Lord. So you got people who are prophesying and lying and speaking divination. And some of the things that they say to people when they prophesy over them is probably the truth. Because they're prophesying by a demonic spirit that is familiar with the person from times past. Not only familiar with the person, but familiar with the person's family. Am I making sense? Now let's go to Acts. Because this was happening in Paul's day. Thank you, Father. I know there's a lot of scriptures, but I think it's important. Acts 16. 
Look at verse 16. It says, and it came to pass as we went to prayer. The enemy is always trying to stop you from praying. Distract you. Confuse you. Frustrate you. A certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us. Which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. So you got the psychics, the fortune tellers, the soothsayers, the people who's practicing the occult getting rich because <laughs> people go to those people instead of going to the Bible for answers instead of going to Jesus for answers the same followed Paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation isn't that something their prophets, this lady is prophesying the demon spirits are speaking through this lady. She's speaking the truth, but Paul says he don't want her truth to be recognized. You see what I'm saying? And she did this for many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said unto the spirit, I can't man thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour, and he came out the same hour, that spirit that was causing that lady to um, divine. And I'm going to close in 2 Peter chapter 2. And you can write down 2 Timothy chapter 3, 12 says, those who, do, who will live godly will suffer persecution. And I've told you on many occasions that the word persecution means to pursue you with the purpose of inflicting pain and harm. That's what the enemy, that's what the demons who is being conjured up and being sent to you, they pursue you for the purpose of inflicting pain and harm. 2 Peter. Second Peter, chapter 2. All throughout the scriptures, the Lord is warning people about false prophets. And today, we've been so conditioned by divination and soothsaying and psychic and new age stuff that is so prevalent now in the church that people are prophesying in the church. And we think it's of God because it's in the church. And because it's supernatural, we don't think of it as a lion sign and wonder. In verse 1 it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying, that's what you see, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many, this is what's happening, many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingers not, and their damnation slumbers not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, Noah, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example, making them an example unto those that should live ungodly, making Sodom and Gomorrah an example to them that will live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation, conversation mean the filthy way of life of the wicked. For that, this is what I wanted you to get to, for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So we going through the same thing of feeling vexed. I've seen the things and hearing the things that's taking place in the world. Our souls, 
has been made righteous because we believe in the name and in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't count it strange when the fiery darts come against you. Don't grow weary and well-doing. Don't shrink back. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ today that these scriptures will build you up, edify you, strengthen you, and, and release in you Holy Ghost boldness to stand up and seek the Lord and draw nigh to Him and pray and seek Seek his face and stand in the gap. Pray for the body of Christ. Pray for the nation. Pray that the Lord's will would be done and that your household would be protected from the snares and the traps of darkness. In Jesus' name. All right? Okay.